Wouldn't it be nice, I like that song, if the Nintendo Switch dock had a built-in Ethernet port or even a thrown-in LAN adapter? Wouldn't that be perfect for gaming on the Switch? Well, guess what? I found one and it's ultra portable. Let's get into it. Every Switch owner knows that the dock isn't perfect. It's kind of bulky and it lacks a very important feature a built-in ethernet port, which basically would enable the Switch to have a wired internet connection. And it's well known that the Switch has terrible Wi-Fi. And if Nintendo would just have packed in a LAN adapter, just like this one, it would have made a lot of gamers happy. But with every major company out there, we all know that greed is on top of all their lists. So Nintendo sells a LAN adapter similar to this one, with a retail price of $29.99. But for that price, I did some searching on Amazon and stumbled upon the Charge Gen Pro Stingray, which is essentially a fully functional portable dock. And yes, this outputs the display of the Nintendo Switch onto the TV as well too. But it also has a built-in ethernet port so you can have a wired connection that's way more reliable than the Switch's Wi-Fi. And keep this in mind that internet speeds really depend on your ISP and what kind of router you have and all that stuff. But in short, there's finally a wired connection on a dock or dock alternative. So let's open this up and get into it. So let's take a quick look at the packaging before we open it. And I must say it is quite nice, very simple, but really nice. And the box is actually pretty thick. Reading that first line right there in the blue, Charge N Pro is based in Los Angeles, California, USA. <laughs> we got you covered. Any issues or questions, we reply fast. So that's their support page right there. And it's really nice to know that they're in LA. When I try to contact companies based out of China for accessories or little things and something happens to the product and I need support, hopefully they reply fast because those other Chinese companies takes like weeks sometimes to get a reply from them. So it's good to know. Good to know. And here's its features. So let's open it up. So that's new. They have a little scratcher in here. I'll scratch that later. Here's the instructions. It says it right there. Again, based in LA, California. <laughs> so here's the actual Stingray itself. I like how there's little notches so it's securely in the box. So here it is. Looking at the form factor of this thing, it's pretty compact and much smaller than the Switch dock. Look at that. You can dock it if you want. <laughs> it is tiny. Well, it's way smaller than I expected. Aesthetically, I love how it's a translucent black. So you can see the innards of it. And if you're a gamer of my age or generation, translucent designs are a huge deal. We still drool over the translucent purple Nintendo 64, the translucent green one with its translucent controllers. Ah, oh, good times, good times, memories. In addition to the outward appearance, there's actually, if you can see it, let me get the glare out of the way. There's actually vents on both sides of this adapter. So whether you have it on the top side or bottom side, there are vents. And I've reviewed other third-party dock alternatives. Essentially, they're just USB-C hubs that work with the Switch. And this is the first that I've seen that's gone the extra mile to add vents, which gives it a bit more safety and airflow to not overheat the product. So looking at the cable and connections, connects via USB-C, obviously. So you just plug this straight into the bottom of your Switch console. Zoom in a bit. And on the other end, it includes a USB 2.0 port followed by a 3.0 port. This is the USB power supply port. So using third-party accessories, I'd always recommend using the original Nintendo power supply that came with the Switch because for safety reasons, you wanna make sure it provides the perfect amount of power to the console. Otherwise it could cause a bit of damage internally and externally, or maybe even burn your house down. But anyway, the next is uh, the HDMI port so that you can output the Switch's display to a TV. And keep this in mind too, it said on the packaging that the product does work for the Switch Lite, but this feature will not work because the Switch Lite can't output its display. So if you want an all-in-one adapter or hub, or even something to have working USB ports on your Switch Lite, this is the perfect adapter or hub for that. And lastly, I've mentioned this probably a million times by now, the integrated Ethernet port, which allows the switch to have a wired connection. Fun fact, 
it's not a mandatory thing to use this wired connection. So if you want to use this Stingray adapter and use the Wi-Fi on your Switch, and you just want to use this for the USB ports, or even as your primary dock. So if you don't want something that's as bulky and maybe as obnoxious, and you want something a little more subtle and smaller, you don't have to use this to use all of these features. So that's nice to know. And one last quick detail, this displays the Switch's output at its max resolution of 1080p. So everything you get in this dock, you have on this thing right here. So let's get this plugged in. Here's the Switch's original power supply. So I have this HDMI cable connected to my Elgato. So we'll plug that in. power supply in and lastly for now here is an ethernet cable or a LAN cable it goes in just like that so I changed angles just a little bit and I will have the Elgato running once it's all powered up Let me move this box out of the way so here's my switch Mewtwo decal on it so what I'm gonna do is everything's all plugged in here plug this into my switch let me turn on the TV so as soon as I turn on my switch it should power up onto the TV and I believe this should light up as well too there you go and to make it easier on myself I'm just gonna use a wireless controller Turn that down. So everything is working. Um, I thought there was an LED indicator. Oh, it's on the bottom. Okay, so the LED indicator is on this side right here. So whenever it's up and running, this should have a white light right there. So the cool thing about this is I have the Elgato up and running now or my capture card up and running. You can see that in the top right hand corner of whichever screen I look at my TV screen or the capture card screen, this thing is actually charging up my switch. So sufficient amount of power is going through this whole thing to power up the switch. Everything is working flawlessly so far. HDMI outs working. Ethernet cable is working. So the wired connection symbol is on. So it instantly identified this as a wired connection so that's good too so this side has the usb 2.0 and the usb 3.0 port and so if i just grab a random wired controller like this princess peach version this is power ray whatever brand it is i'll just put it into the usb 2.0 side and there you go it's providing enough power to power this up and there you go now everything is working so if I want to switch the controller order, so to change up the controller order, there you go. It's reading the USB controller as number one and press the home button or home button, sorry. <laughs> Back to Animal Crossing. So this controller is functional. I'll just leave that plugged in. And if you haven't seen one of my other videos where I plug in a PlayStation Gold headset to a switch, I have a free USB port right there. So let's give it a try. To provide sufficient power to the headset, this light will light up if this little hub can power it up. There's the light right there, it's blinking blue. So it has enough power to power it up. And if I turn this on, land cable kind of sucks because the bottom part broke. So if we turn this on, it should power up. And it's connected. So we're gonna see if it works on Animal Crossing. Get closer to the speaker, it should get louder. And there you have it, so this works too. And I'm pretty sure everybody is wondering how fast the internet connection is on this thing. As I mentioned earlier, it does depend on your ISP and I have Spectrum and everybody knows that Spectrum sucks. So we're going to try out the internet connection test. Oy. 48 megabytes download speed, about 9.3 megabytes upload speed. Jeez, Spectrum sucks. Let's test it one more time. Yeah, my internet is not the best. Before I end this video, 
Let's unplug it and plug it in one more time to see how responsive it is. Plug it back in. There you have it. Is this controller still connected? Yes, it is. So once again, this is the Charge Gen Pro Stingray. I got this from Amazon for $29.99. If anybody else is interested out there or want to take a better look at it, I'll drop a link down below. But other than that, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And if you really like this video, make sure to check out these other videos. They've probably all popped up all around the screen by now. They might interest you in some way. And if you really like spending time with me, consider subscribing to be the first to know when I upload something new. Hope everybody has a great rest of their day. See you all soon. Stay safe out there, everybody. Bye.